Code red, we have a breach. Casting from the deep depths of cyberspace, this is Darn IT Podcast, Cybersecurity Made Simple, and I'm your host, Darn the G, CEO of Darn IT Group. Episode 24, Reducing Insider Threats. Thank you all for listening to this next podcast. In today's podcast, I'll be talking about insider threats. Uh, anyone inside or outside of the, of the cybersecurity community uh, may or may not be aware of insider threats and how it has a detrimental effect for all organizations of all shapes and sizes. So what is an insider threat? To summarize, uh, insider threat is a security threat that originates from inside a company being attacked or targeted. Now, what does this mean? Typically, they could be contractors uh, and the biggest insider threat, as you will, that has made a lot of mainstream news uh, is uh, Edward Snowden. He was a NSA contractor um, that revealed a lot of information um, inside the government. He would be considered an insider. Um, that could also be a business associate, uh, anyone that has access or knowledge in the business security practices, uh, may have access to confidential information, access to privileged networks, etc. and so forth. Now, there's typically two types of threats. On one hand is intentional, and the other hand is unintentional. And the biggest thing with insider threats is they could be really tricky to detect. There's not a calculation or formula uh, one can implement when trying to surmise the risk when it comes to insider threats. So it is really hard to really take into an account that someone could potentially cause harm to an organization, either that be intentionally or unintentionally. Now, what I mean by intentional would be someone who has privileged access to the network, for example, uh, and maybe an employee that has a lot of information, let's say in HR, they may release the financial records of the organization or perhaps release the financial records of the CEO of that company, for example or potentially may have some data where they would like to sell it on the dark web or through someone they've been speaking to. And unintentional insider threats could be someone who was a victim of a phishing attack and they clicked on a link that basically opened a back door to the organization. And so far the rabbit hole went when it comes to loss of data. Now, according to a 2019 Verizon data breach investigations report, they had said that 34% of data breaches involved internal actors. So the biggest problem with that, with the 34% of data breaches, internal, basically the internal actors were involved in these, is you have to understand that the business environments are becoming more complex. A lot of the environments, the technical environments are now uh, multifaceted. There's different aspects, uh, different things. So if data is becoming or has already become more valuable than oil, the amount of data one can get from a company and they could sell on the dark web or a whole ransom you know, it's very valuable to cyber criminals and people looking to make an extra buck. But you have to understand that now that we're moving to more as clouds or hybrid solutions, a lot of companies are offboarding a lot of responsibility to third parties. So that in itself brings uh, complexities to the environment, but inherently adds a element of risk to everything. Some companies that are you know, bring your own device, 
uh, they want to lower the IT overhead. And, you know, we've seen this in a lot of uh, small, medium organizations who don't want to take the brunt of, of the initial capital expense of technologies. Or in terms of the latest pandemic, a lot more users are becoming more remote. So you're seeing a lot more people in their own separate environments. So this all adds levels of risks in comparison to the traditional way where everything would be kept in house and could be protected, protected by the inside um, technologies departments to protect these devices from harm. So there are steps to mitigate risk. Now, you cannot eliminate risk because this is going to be a dynamic problem uh, years ahead as technology evolve, as as these threats evolve. Really, there is all you can do really is try to reduce your footprint, you know, reduce the amount of risk your organization faces when it comes to insider threats. And the very key thing here is preparation. A lot of businesses don't prepare for this. They don't take this into consideration and put this in their war book, as you will. And they have to understand that preparation is fundamentally the best step in the right direction. So in terms of preparing for insider threats, understanding your risk, getting risk assessments can provide guidance that companies can recognize the threats in areas of, of high business impact. So, for example, understanding that if you have a cloud-based solution or a cloud-based data storage solution, understanding the risks of that, of who has access to certain databases or through certain data dumps that could potentially be used against that organization. Businesses that have mature compliance positioning um, will have better data and privacy classifications and classifications around various accounts or groups in different environments. So having that risk assessment in your organization or having a risk assessment in the business in itself, can start, you can start having these classifications of areas inside your business where it could basically minimize the threat to your organization. Now, the next step here is about training and awareness. When I used to do work in my past life, a lot of things came to, to be about situational awareness. You know, something that was ingrained inside of me um, from my past life is, is building, building that situational awareness. And, and that can basically be, be transferred um, to the awareness in an organization when it comes to insider threats. When you're understanding your situational awareness when it comes to your level of threats is really a, a key thing to identify sort of which employees or which sections of your organization could be of concern, where you can understand where the risk may lay in your organization by building that situational awareness. So understanding sort of a 360 view of your business to understand is where are we going to put most of our time and effort into this into this um, cause so that we can understand where these risks are because from the gate a lot of businesses don't know where their weaknesses are or where uh, someone could you know spill the beans as you will so understanding that situational awareness will really empower the business to identify those situations of concern so they can report suspicious activities or invest money into um, technologies and services that will help um, continue that brand of awareness for that organization. Now, when you talk about cybersecurity training, uh, let me highlight the point that this is a very important thing to do in any organization, big or small, uh, because that training will help their employees be able to deflect or to be able to understand some of the the um, tricks of the trade, as you will, when cyber criminals try to call in, um, send a, 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 a voicemail message, or send an email, it's it's really it's to build that awareness campaign so that in the event that that particular employee is trying to get fished, for example, um, they'll may be able to know what to do. 
Now that kind of goes back to me and say, and and for me to say that the the reason I find that sometimes uh, training is pointless, cybersecurity awareness training is good to a point, but it is inadvertently pointless. And and I say this because human human beings are interesting creatures. Um, for example. Think about dieting. Um, you may understand the benefits of dieting or working out or doing something that would be good for your health. But as we all know, uh, and uh, I can speak from experience, that it, it is a hard change. Changing the way you do things is very difficult. It is the path of most resistance. And that change could be hard, even though an organization may do uh, cybersecurity awareness training once a year, which is good. But on the flip side to that, it is really hard for humans to, to really uh, digest that. Um, when it comes to employees who are not technically savvy or security savvy, uh, they may inadvertently take a longer time to get this habit formed, especially if it's a, an older or younger individual. Um, they all have different paths of, of resistance. But it really comes down to why that change is so hard. And if you look at most of the statistics when it comes to these attacks, especially when it comes to unintentional insider threats, most of the time these threats happen due to phishing attacks. Because that employee may be aware of something, but typically speaking, and some of the examples that I've seen, is they may be doing 50 things, they may have that training, they may have that awareness, but at the end of the day, they may be in the middle of something and they may not be fully aware or, or conscious that that particular attack is happening and may click on the link or may reply to the email, whatever, and, and that could be game over. So it's something as simple as that, and that's why I say where sometimes cybersecurity awareness training is, is sometimes useless because if you think about the dieting aspect, and that humans um, are very reluctant to change, that having awareness campaign uh, once in a while is really not that effective. It has to be consistent and enforced uh, day in and day out through upper management, lower management, supervisors, employees themselves, that it's very key to make sure that you hit on that. And um, you have to combine that awareness training with life testing. So here at Darn IT Group, uh, we do live training or live testing of certain environments through, uh, let's say, our Hackers for Hire, where we would call, email, try to spoof employees. So having a real live uh, test would be key to understanding where your organization may stand in terms of your insider threat. So where the sort of floodgates can can be opened or knocked down. And if you think you're living in Fort Knox, for example, uh, you may not think, oh, well, the security guard over here or the HR manager over there may inadvertently give access to the vault by, by a phishing attack. So that's why these live testing campaigns uh, are very key in finding out the raw data and the raw information in terms of why that organization perhaps need to do more awareness training or you may sit down with the weakest links, as you will, to perhaps maybe understand where they went wrong and certain methods that the business can employ to better protect themselves, but also give that employee special training and handhold them so that they can understand the reasons why you're doing this. So that in the real world where uh, they do get fished, or they do get that phone call, uh, they will stand out on top and they'll be able to deflect these threats even during a stressful environment. Another thing too is sometimes these intentional insider threats, uh, some organizations that I've seen uh, hire employees, they don't do proper background checks, they don't do proper reference checks um, because they are desperate, they need that position filled, is they may get someone who may not have the cleanest record so to speak. So having those background checks are very key to understanding that particular employee. If you're bringing someone who may have been uh, a ex-convict or someone who has a record or who may not have proper references, will really help minimize that risk to your organization when you, you do your proper due diligence. So a combination of training, awareness, sort of classifying 
the certain aspects of your business will really help give that picture that will paint that picture for an organization to see where their weakest links are in their organization so that they can close the gap, not eliminate, but at least close the gap when it comes to the amount of insider threats that a company may face um, through their endeavors from now and into the future. Thank you for listening to Darn IT Podcast with Darn Lee G. If you like her show and want to know more, like or subscribe her podcast. Remember, look both ways before crossing the information superhighway. Safe computing, everybody. Bye.